okay guys, this week we're gonna make a change to multiply. We have done adding and subtracting and have those skills. But now we're going to start talking about multiplying polynomials. So we kind of have two methods that we're gonna deal with. One of them, this method one, I primarily talk about as being the distributive method. And on this one, we have to distribute a number in front of the parentheses to all the terms inside the parentheses. And then once they're distributed, we're going to simplify all the terms that are in there. And for us, that means that I'm probably going to have to do some type of multiplying and probably other stuff too. It just depends on the problem that you have. Now, the second method... I primarily refer to as the box method. And I will tell you, most kids when we do this may start out with distributive, but I'll say by the time we get to the end, I'd say maybe 95% of them are doing the box method because the box method just seems easier to them. Um, so to do the box method, we have to set it up, multiply all our matching terms, and then we need to simplify. So really, some of the methods are very similar because when we talk about simplifying up here, we also have to simplify down here. So there are some things that are alike. So today what I'm going to do is do both methods. And then I do not care which method you choose after this, but you need to choose one and kind of stick with it so you can practice it just to make sure you're doing it the same way every time and you build up those skills. So here's an example of the first one. So I have 7x, parentheses, 6x plus 4y. So in this kind of a problem, what we're going to have to do is distribute this to each one. So when I do the distributive method, remember, that means that I'm going to have to multiply. So I'm going to go through this first one and show you a little bit about how distributive property works. So if I distribute, that means I have to do 7x times 6x, because those are the first two terms. And then I'm going to have to do 7x times positive 4y. Okay, so in our method, that was the distributive part. Now we're going to simplify that. So if I look at this first piece right here, 7x times 6x, first of all, the 7 times 6 is going to give you 42. And then x times x is x squared. Now if I look at the second one, I have 7, a positive 7x and a positive 4y. So 7 times 4 is going to be 28. And x and y, the most I can do is put them next to each other so that they're in alphabetical order because I can't combine them. So there's our answer. So I want to show you how the box method works. So first of all, let's go back and apply something that you did in elementary school. If I had this kind of a problem... I would go ahead and set it up. Usually, whichever has the most digits goes on top. Whichever has the least amount goes second. But if you do the box method, it kind of might remember, might remind you of lattice for those of you that did lattice in elementary school. So I put 17 here, and I would put 4 there. So I'd multiply them together just like I would do length times width. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing with this. So in this problem, 7x has the least amount of terms. So I'm going to put it in the front, and I'm going to make my box. This has two terms, so I'm going to put it across the top right here. And because there are two terms, I'm going to make them have their own columns. So now it just becomes about multiplying. So 7x times 6x 
is 42x squared. 7x times positive 4y is positive 28xy. So then I would just take my two terms and put them together. If I had things to combine, I would. But in this one, I don't. Now, you'll notice you get the same answer either way. Now, I will tell you, just because I know where we're going in this section, the box method, I'm just telling you, is going to be so much easier. Because the box method, no matter how big this parenthesis might get, the box method is always going to keep kind of your stuff separated in their own little spots, and it's going to make it easier for you to put things together. So just to keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to go to this next one now. And uh, I guess I'll do one more with distributive and box method, and then I'll go straight to the box method because I think most of you are probably going to want that. So on this one, this gets distributed to each one of those. So 3r times 7r, bring down my minus, and then 3r times 8. Okay, now we need to multiply our pieces together. So 3r and 7r would be 21r squared. Now, for those of you that don't remember, you're able to get a squared here because with these r's, if you don't assume there's a variable there, it's 1, so there'd be a 1 and a 1, which would give you 2. So in case you've forgotten that... Now, in the next one, negative 3r times 8 is going to be negative 24r. Okay, so let's set up the box method. So 3r on this side, I'm going to set up my box. And then 7r. And then that minus 8, I'm going to make a negative 8. So make sure you don't use, lose your negative just like we've done before. And honestly, it doesn't matter. If I put the 3r up here and the 7r minus 8 here, you'll still get the same answer. It's, it's good either way. But I tend to start with whatever the smallest amount of terms is on this side. That just happens to be my habit. Okay, so 3r times 7r is 21r squared, and 3r times negative 8 is going to be negative 24r. So then we're going to take our terms from this and put them together to make our expression. So 21r squared minus 24r. And you'll notice you get the same answer either way. Now, most kids will say they, they do prefer the box method because it keeps stuff together. It looks like it takes up less amount of space. In the long run, no matter how many terms we have in the first expression or in the second, you're probably going to have answers that come together a little bit easier. So on this last one that I'm going to do today, I'm going to put this straight out in the box method. So 8x... Make my box. 6x plus 6. And then I'm going to start my multiplying. So 8x plus 6x is 48x squared. And 8x plus 6 is plus 48x. So 48x squared plus 48x. Okay, make sure you're taking some good notes in this section, and that's all for this one.